one. Hey, hey, y'all, hey. I got to get this little thing back here, so um, don't chat amongst yourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay. We're just going to let the cat out of the bag right now. Uh, my voice is still not the greatest from the mission trip, okay? I was doing a lot of yelling, a lot of construction, was speaking over a lot of hammers, so I will take some pauses to take some sips, but I need you guys to bear with me. Can you bear with me? Somebody literally said no, <laughs> um, but I am so excited to be with you. If you have not met me yet, if this is your first time here, my name is Mia. I am the Radiate Coordinator, so you get to see my beautiful face on stage time to time, but you will see me running around doing a lot of random things. But today, I get to bring the word. And I am so, so excited to bring week three in the series of why. And for somebody that is super curious and that likes to ask a lot of questions, I was so excited to be able to bring a word in this series. And the word that I'm bringing is, why does God feel far away? And we can all admit it. We can just take a big sigh out because we know that most Christians have felt this place. Like, I felt this place, Pastor Jake has felt this place, most of your leaders have been in a place where it's like, man, like, I know that I know God, I know that I'm a Christian, I know that I believe in him, but he feels so far away from me in this moment. And where you are in your faith, you're just thinking, well, obviously God doesn't see me, or God's not holding my hand through the hard things. And so what do we do in those moments where God feels really distant, he feels far almost like silent, like you haven't heard from him in a while. So we're going we're gonna to figure out what to do in those moments. And so first thing I wanted to do was relate to distance. So as a lot of you guys pick on me for all the time, I'm from New Jersey, okay? I don't have a big accent, but there are little things like on or dog like that pop out the Jersey accent. Um, and part of me being from New Jersey is I have a lot of friends from New Jersey. And up on the screens, these are my two best friends. Andrea and Alyssa from when they got married, or when, not, they didn't get married to each other, but when Alyssa got married, um, and they're my best friends. We have been friends since we were eight years old, like so little, and then when my family moved and they were still together, we literally lived in like the same neighborhood, and so sometimes I'd see them all hanging out, especially when we were in high school, and I'd just get like immense FOMO. Does anybody else get FOMO sometimes? Fear of missing out? Y'all never get FOMO? Raise your hand if you get FOMO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever, like, you, you're missing out on something, you see on Snapchat everybody's hanging out, you see on Be Real everybody's hanging out, and you didn't get the invite, you get a little bit of FOMO. But I get FOMO with them all the time. But just because I get FOMO doesn't mean that we don't have a relationship. Just because sometimes I feel like they're not super close or we're not having the closest relationship at that moment doesn't mean that they're, we don't have a relationship or that they don't love me. And so, just to be clear, you and God don't have any physical distance. The Lord is always going to be near to you. But sometimes, even though you know you have a relationship with the Lord, and you know how close that relationship is, sometimes for us, we just feel like he is so far and so distant that it's one of those things where you're like, well, like, I know God loves me. In the back of my head, like, I know John 3.16, I know that God loves me, but I just feel so far from him right now. And so, what do we do? in those moments where you fee feel so far from him. And we're going to kind of see this in the life of David. David was known as this king who loved the Lord with all of his heart. He loved the Lord so fiercely, more fiercely than most people in the Bible. But there are moments where David felt like God was so far from him. And we see in scripture, we're going to hop into Psalms 13, where David is saying, God, you are so immensely far from me, and so what do I do when God feels far from me? So we're going to hop into Psalms 13, if you want to write it down, verse 1 through 2. It says, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? And so essentially, David's in the trenches. Like, that's the best way to explain it. He feels like his circumstances are so heavy and that since his circumstances are so heavy and he doesn't see light anywhere, that God is so far from him, that God isn't going to be near to him, that he is in the dark and he's going to be stuck. And so that, I want to encourage you that what you're feeling, 
when you're like, man, God feels so distant. You're not alone in that. Even one of the greatest people in the Bible, somebody that loved the Lord, fiercely felt that too, that God was distant and far from him. And so what are we going to do? Like, what do we do and how do we know what to do when God feels far and distant? And we jump into this first in Matthew 16, 1 through 4. Essentially, Jesus is talking to Pharisees and Sadducees. And these are two Jewish, like, almost like type leaders. Like, they're very, very good at following Ju- the Jewish faith. And so Jesus steps in and they go, man, like, if you're the Messiah, like, give us a sign. Like, give us a sign that you're the Messiah. We want to know the truth. Like, if you're the Messiah, let us know. Give us a sign. And this is how Jesus is going to respond to them. In Matthew 16, 1 through 4, it says, One day the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to test Jesus, demanding that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. He replied, You know the saying, red sky at night means fair weather tomorrow. Red sky in the morning means foul weather all day. You know how to interpret the weather signs in the sky, but do not know how to interpret the sign of the times. Only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. But the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then Jesus left and went away. So I'm going to break it down because it can sound a little confusing. Jesus is talking about weather, and then he's talking about Jonah. And so he goes back and forth. But what essentially the Pharisees and the Sadducees are saying is like, show us a sign. Show us that you really are the Messiah and you're here to do what you're saying you're here to do and that you're really going to save these people. Show us that you are who you're saying you are. So for us, it's not that we're wanting God to do something big or show us a specific sign, like put our name in the clouds to know that he's there. But for us, it might be something different. Sometimes we as people, and this is my first point, misunderstand the presence of God. We misunderstand what the presence of God can look like. And it looks a bunch of different ways. Like when we're really truly experiencing God and when the Lord is dwelling with us sometimes, it looks different, but we want it to look in a specific way. So let me give you an example. Let's say, um, you know, Thursday night at camp, Normally, a bunch of people give their lives to Jesus, and it's absolutely amazing, and the Lord is dwelling, and everybody's crying, and a lot of times I'll talk to students, and they'll say, yeah, the Spirit of the Lord was there that night, or like our November combined night. The Spirit of the Lord was there on November combined night. People were confessing their sins to their friends, and they were going to their friends and their leaders, and they were getting prayed over. That is where the Spirit of the Lord is dwelling. Or maybe it was a mission trip, or maybe it was a real conference. And all of these things, the Spirit of the Lord does dwell. But he isn't a different spirit in those moments than he is in your quiet time. When you're sitting down and you're reading your Bible, the same spirit that was at combined night is sitting with you, ready to show you something. Or the same spirit that was at combined night's is with you when you're sitting on your bread and you're paying to him, asking and seeking his face. That is the same Holy Spirit that was there at camp that is coming to you and telling you that you need to share the gospel with your friend. It's the same spirit in each place. Do you get what I'm saying? It's the presence of the Lord that moves with you. The presence of the Lord doesn't stay in this building. He doesn't stay in Myrtle Beach when we go to camp. He doesn't stay in Etlin when we go to mission trips. The Spirit of the Lord is within you if you know him, and he travels with you, and he wants to be invited into these spaces. I was talking to a student when we were on the mission trip, actually, and um, she was telling me, she said, Mia, it was so cool. I have experienced the Lord in such a cool way. He was showing me something about my passion and who I, I'm, what I'm being called to do. He was showing me a piece of my calling that night, I think. And she was crying, and we were praying as a group. And then later I was having a conversation with her, and I said, you know, it's awesome that the Lord met you there. What I want you to do is go home, and in your quiet place and the secret place with the Lord, I want you to pray about it. I want you to go home, and I want you to get alone 
with God and have that conversation because the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you about that again and again and again. Don't leave that here where we are in a, st- a state away, but I want you to bring that home and invite the Holy Spirit in to the secret place. The cool thing was that God met her in that building. Regardless of what happened or what happens when we come home, God met her in that building. But when she's praying over this thing, God is also going to meet her there too. When she's talking to him about it in her quiet time, when she's seeking scripture on what it looks like to do the Lord's work, the Lord is going to meet her there. The same Holy Spirit that was there that night when he revealed something to her is going to be the same Holy Spirit that is there for the rest of her life in the secret place. So sometimes when we feel like we're so far from God, we aren't really far from God at all. We're just misunderstanding what the presence of the Lord looks like. You don't need a powerful worship set. You don't need a bunch of other people to start lifting their hands in worship. You don't need a friend to break down crying. Sometimes what you need to do is go into your closet and get on your knees and talk to your Lord and say, Holy Spirit, come. I want you to be here with me. And this is something that I'm seeking more and more for myself too. And I've been so excited to share it with you because I know that the Spirit of the Lord is the same in all of those moments as he is in your quiet time. So that's my first point. My second point, sometimes when we feel far away from God, it's not that God is far from us, but it's the fact that we are moving away from God. So Jesus had a half-brother, because, you know, his dad was God. Um, Jesus had a half-brother, and so his half-brother, his name was James. James wrote a letter to the church, and so he's writing this letter to Christians, and these Christians are saying, like, what do I do for God to feel near? Like, what does it look like for God to be near to me. And so James writes this in the fourth chapter, verse 8. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. And so essentially what James is saying is oftentimes we aren't just focusing and we aren't just chasing God, but what we're chasing is our sin and our idols. And don't get me wrong, we do not have a God that walks away from us ever or will just let us walk away from him. God is always close, but it's almost like you're running in this direction toward your sin and all these things that the Lord is wanting you to leave behind. But if you would just turn around, you'd recognize that God is right behind you and that he's not moving. He's not distant. You're just not looking at him. You're looking towards something else. You're chasing the wrong thing. And the best way that I could think of this this week Everybody knows Gray, right? Where's Gray at? Hey, Gray. Everybody say, hey, Gray. Um, So Gray, as some of you guys know, is training for a marathon. Um, (laughs) See, they know Gray. They know you're training for a marathon. Um, But as part of Gray's marathon training is he runs a lot. Like he runs every single day, miles and miles and miles. But if Gray didn't do anything to train, If next month he just showed up and was like, okay, cool, I'm going to run, and didn't train, didn't run miles, didn't run half marathons, didn't get the right shoes, didn't figure out how to drink water, didn't figure out how to do gels, if he just showed up and didn't do any of that, and then obviously couldn't complete the race, he can't question why it was so difficult. He can't say, why didn't I finish the race? Like, I, I don't understand why I didn't finish the race if he didn't prepare for the race, if he didn't do all the things that he needed to do to be able to finish. And for us, sometimes we go, well, I I want God to feel near to me, but we're not doing anything to be near to him. We're not reading our Bible. We're not praying. We're not showing up. We're not participating in breakout groups. We're not going to church on Sunday, but we're thinking, what, man, but like, I feel so distant And God is so silent for me. Why is God so silent for me? It's because you're not going to where he is. You're not not calling him on the phone. God feels silent because you're not talking to him. He's not distant from you. You're just not chasing him. And I'm not trying to be harsh. Guys, this is my story. As 
I first started coming back to church. I rededicated my life to Jesus, but I was still living in the world so heavily. And all I did was chase the things of the world. I just wanted to do what everybody else was doing and live the life that I was living before. But I would go to a small group and I'd hear all these girls talking about how God was so near and God was showing them things. And they knew that God loved them more than he ever did before. And I was like, well, how do I, like, I can't hear from God. God. God is silent to me. But I wasn't chasing God. I was chasing the world. And so what James is saying here to the believers is that he, they have to be chasing God consistently. That they need to come near to God so that they can hear him. And that's the way that we're going to know that God isn't silent to us. We just need to be chasing after him. Sometimes God isn't silent, but we're too busy spending time with our sin and looking to our sin and chasing our idols to recognize that he's trying to talk to us. The really cool reality in all of this, I got to drink water. No, everybody take a water break. That's great. The really cool reality in all of this is it doesn't matter how we feel. (laughs) Remember how I was talking earlier about how sometimes we expect it to be a cry night or we expect a bunch of people to be saved or the best worship songs to play over and over again for the spirit to be there. But in reality, it doesn't matter how we feel. The Lord has already made us a promise that he's never going to leave us at all, ever. (coughs) And we see this as we jump back into the Psalms, and David finds his hope. He recognizes that the presence of God is something that's inescapable, that will never leave us, that will never forsake us. And so we look a hundred Psalms later than the beginning, And we see the hope in Psalm 139. (coughs) Getting a little choked up. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, Even there your hand will will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. (coughs) Oh, goodness. If I say, surely, the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. From darkness is light to you. (coughs) We're going to get through this, because I just feel like I'm getting really excited. Um... And Satan's trying to stop me. So we're just going to keep going, right? We're going to keep getting through it. Um, I just want to let you guys know that if you're going through a season where you feel like the Lord is distant from you, if you're in a place where you feel like God isn't talking to you, or you maybe have done something wrong, (coughs) oh, my goodness, I want you to know that we have a God that doesn't leave or forsake you. We have a God that will never walk away from you. Our Savior is faithful and constant and true to his people. And so sometimes we need to stop chasing our sin and start turning and chasing our Savior. And for some of us, sometimes we need to realize that the Spirit of the Lord is present in our quiet time. The spirit of the Lord is present when it's just you and him spending time together. And so I kind of want us just to slow down and recognize that there's a hope. That we can be hopeful that the spirit of the Lord wants to spend time with us. And so (coughs) I can't talk anymore, you guys. Um, But I do want to (laughs) pray. And I want us all to spend time in prayer before I finish. I just know that there's somebody in here that feels like God is so distant from them. And I want you guys to just take some time in prayer 
and remind yourself of that song.